It's round two, the big three. Asimov. Clark. Heinlein. Starting with 2001, A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clark, 1968. As you can see, it is based on the screenplay by Arthur C. Clark and Stanley Kubrick. 2001 has its genesis in two, perhaps more, short stories by Arthur C. Clarke. Encounter in the Dawn, 1953, is a short story that influences the beginning of the film. We see an alien race uplifting humans. This becomes a theme in 2001. The Sentinel, first published in 1951, deals with an artifact found on the moon which eventually sends a signal. This becomes the monolith in the 2001 script. By the way, there will be spoilers for the film and the book. I don't normally do this, but I think this story is so well known that this will enhance your understanding of the novel. Clark's novel reads like an extended edition of the film. While Kubrick's film is enigmatic and beautiful, Clark's novel is a straightforward tale. It is a tale of uplift and first contact. It explores themes of evolution, artificial intelligence, and man's place in the universe. If you sometimes wondered about some of the things that went on in Stanley Kubrick's film, Clark does have some answers. A couple differences. In the film, the monolith is different than Clark has from the script. Clark's monolith is one by four by nine, and it's transparent. In the movie, the monolith is black and extended in its aspect ratio. Some say that Kubrick was simply taking the widescreen and turning on its edge, that there's an undertone or homage to movie storytelling here, not in Clark's novel. The story on Discovery One of Poole, Bowman and HAL 9000 is basically the same, with a few differences. One big difference, though, is that they go to the planet Jupiter in the movie version, and in the novel they go to Saturn. One cool idea from the novel is that the rings of Saturn were formed exactly when the monolith appeared in the solar system. Speculation is that the rings of Saturn could be debris from the construction of the monoliths. What are the monoliths? Clark himself calls them the Swiss army knife of the universe. They are a teacher, mentor, first warning system, gateway, and perhaps more. Clark does continue this story in 2010, 2061, and 3001. So if you're interested in knowing more about this movie, Clark's 2001 fills in a lot of gaps, but it certainly isn't the work of art that Kubrick's film is. I do think it's a good companion piece. Next up, Robert A. Heinlein, Starship Troopers, 1959. This military novel is a first person narrative by Johnny Rico. We follow him as he goes through recruitment, training and fighting the arachnids, or as they're known by the soldiers, the bugs. The mobile infantry of the 22nd century are equipped with futuristic space suits with battle armor and weapons. A highlight of this novel are the action sequences in the battles with the arachnids. However, there are not as many as you think there might be. This is more a novel about training and ideology. During training, John A. Rico comes to the realization that Happiness consists in getting enough sleep. This novel being written in the late 1950s, the Cold War comes into play, and also the training feels a lot like training we have seen in World War II films. Heinlein, of course, would be very familiar with this. While The Forever War by Joe Haldeman owed a lot of its sequences to the Vietnam War experiences of Haldeman, I think Heinlein's novel owes a lot to World War II for its depiction of training and military battles. An area of contention about this novel 
is what you do with long stretches about ideology. Some may say this is a strength, others a weakness. To become a full voting citizen in this society, you must serve a term in the military. Teachers and instructors go on long ideological rants. One particularly long sequence is by Mr. Dubois, a teacher. It is about juvenile delinquents, corporal punishment, and capital punishment. So Robert Heinlein's Starship Troopers looks at serving without question. Joe Haldeman's The Forever War wonders what war is all about. The Caves of Steel by Isaac Asimov, 1954. The Caves of Steel are the cities of Earth. They are domed and buried into the ground. Earth's population has reached 8 billion. All of humanity on Earth lives in these steel caves. Now, I read this novel when I was in my teens, and you know, I don't really remember the steel caves, but I certainly do remember the detective story and the two partners, human Lige Bailey and robot Daniel Oliva. This buddy cop science fiction mashup is fascinating. Isaac Asimov's Three Robotic Laws were at the core of the programming for all of his robots, including Daniel. We see that there is a rift between spacers and people of Earth. Spacers have embraced robotics. Earth is fearful of robotics, especially in the way that they can take humans' jobs. Adjacent to the New York Cave of Steel is a spacer dome with ambassadors to Earth. A murder occurs in their dome. Lige, short for Elijah Bailey, is a detective in the New York Cave of Steel. The bureaucrats from both the Spacer Dome and New York ask Lige to team up with Daniel, who at first Lige doesn't know is a robot. Daniel can pass as human. This is important as Daniel ventures into New York with Lige. I'm not really going to talk about the plot too much other than to say. It is a cracking detective story. There is something very charismatic in the relationship between Lige and Daniel. So here we go. How do I rate the novels? 2001. Does read like an extended version of the film. I love the added science fiction components that you can find in here. I give this novel 8 out of 10. Starship Troopers. Great military scenes. Reads like a World War II story. The long ideological or philosophical passages turn me off. For me, 6 out of 10. The Caves of Steel. Great buddy cop science fiction novel. Appealing characters, interesting themes, and a mystery. I thoroughly enjoyed this novel. I give it 8 out of 10. So, in third place, Robert A. Heinlein's Starship Troopers. But we have a tie for first. I gave both of these novels 8 out of 10, 2001 and The Caves of Steel. So, the tiebreaker, which one of these novels would I most likely reread? I have to say that this story I've seen and read too many times. But the mystery, the examination of AI and culture, to look at the future of humanity and just a really good relationship between Lige and Daniel gives the Caves of Steel the edge. So round two goes to Isaac Asimov. So let me know if you agree or disagree with my ratings. Who would have been your winner this round? Will there be a round three? There will. I finished reading Isaac Asimov's The End of Eternity. I'm in the middle of reading The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert A. Heinlein. And next up for Arthur C. Clarke, Rendezvous with Rama. See you for round three.